This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Alexander Finlayson tells us how Medicine Africa aims to bring healthcare professionals around the world in a global expert network. Hello Alexander. What is Medicine Africa? Medicine Africa is an organisation which basically consists of two components, one of which is a, a global health communications platform, uh, so an online technology to enable health workers in different locations to communicate, uh, and then some programmes that we've built uh, off the back of that uh, to enable uh, capacity building efforts to be uh, scaled up at a distance online. Uh, to give some context, the programme started in Somaliland, uh, a country which has very fragile health indicators, uh, and to give some illustration of that, the uh, it's estimated that somewhere near 1 in 11 people will be shackled at some point due to mental ill health, so a really fragile health system there. Um, and what we've done is built programmes on this uh, platform, Medicine Africa, to enable um, teaching, mentoring, support and service delivery interventions uh, that uh, help to build capacity with across the, the both m medical and non-medical cadres of health worker in Somaliland. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five years? The, uh, the interventions that we're making, uh, clearly um, it's important to both demonstrate uh, that we're both doing no harm and also doing good and that the, the, the good that we can demonstrate is uh, also uh, taken into consider the indirect effects that one can, can have in a development intervention such as supporting um, uh, health worker training. Uh, and therefore we've done a lot of evaluation uh, around the educational methodology and we have a PhD student uh, who is specifically studying um, whether or not it, you can actually train health workers in this way remotely. The context in Somaliland is one in which there is very limited other uh, infrastructure for supporting those health workers uh, and therefore we hope that this intervention is at least a start towards that um, but clearly we have uh, this PhD student studying the pedagogy uh, and then we um, or have some public health physicians who are uh, and have been evaluating uh, the, the, the development impact of, of an intervention of this sort, an M health intervention of this sort. And what are your plans for the future? So the programme in Somaliland we've, we've um, currently uh, used about 200 or uh, managed to extract about 250,000 pounds worth of NHS workforce time um, as volunteer to support health workers in various different ways in Somaliland. Uh, that programme is now expanding over the course of the next three years through funding from DFID Somalia to support other healthcare workers, so non-medical cadres of healthcare workers such as pharmacists and nurses and, and clinical training officers. Um, and in addition, we've started some new programs. For example, we're now supporting 100 medical students a week, a much smaller intervention, but um, in partnership with um, doctors from Oxford, of registrars and junior consultants, um, who are supporting uh, doctors uh, and medical students in Al Quds Medical School in um, the West Bank. Um, so um, effectively, the next period of time looks like scaling up the work that we're doing in Somaliland, expanding uh, into new countries, including Palestine, and also uh, n a new partnership with Kenya, um, Rwanda and Uganda um, through the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health here in London. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? So I think that uh, I would create some kind of analogy between 19... 47 Britain where the Londoner and the Aberdonian weren't necessarily very interdependent in terms of their health care uh, and the situation globally today. Uh, I think that there's real potential that increasingly we'll consider the denominator of kind of responsibility um, for global health care interventions uh, uh, with the global population as opposed to the local or the national. A and I think that uh, given that context and the, p the potential for global health to, to increase equity across that denominator, um, I think that um, interventions I in global health which um, try to build capacity, particularly in those um, countries which are particularly fragile, for example, Somaliland uh, or Palestine, um, I think bridge the, the no-do gap, which is as important as the cutting edge Western science, which clearly um, Oxford has such great expertise in. Can you tell us about any other projects you're working on? I work here with uh, Dr. Raghi Bali in the INDOX group at Oxford University, um, which uh, is b r r working around the areas of research capacity building and, and research um, collaboration in India particularly in, in cancer. Uh, my role with that group is to support uh, Raghi Bali, the director of the network, in order to try to find um, innovative ways of funding uh, what is essentially uh, predominantly research capacity uh, building as opposed to uh, traditional research funding streams uh, and supporting him to try to find sustainable ways in order to keep um, delivering a development uh, intervention of that sort. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? 
so translational medicine, I guess, traditionally is considered in the context of the biomedical um, development pipeline, if you like, the translational pipeline. I, I think there's an emergent uh, new um, translational pipeline in global health, which at the one hand has um, global health research um, bridged across to the interventions occurring, not necessarily through the pharmaceutical companies, as is the case often with the biomedical interventions, but through NGOs and ministries of health and the private sector uh, in various different ways um, to build capacity in, in countries in which have um, uh, fragile uh, health systems. Uh, and I, th I think that uh, this work in health worker strengthening, in uh, supporting uh, mentoring of healthcare workers and in supporting the design and delivery of new services, for example, uh, a new clinic which we've um, established in Somaliland uh, that's seeing patients with uh, mental ill health for the first time in one of the towns there. Um, uh, these interventions really contribute to the, the global health translational pipeline, if you, if you like, as opposed to the biomedical one. And so I think that this is uh, a piece of work which sits very much in that context. Thank you, Alexander.